Okay. Not use that chat box and let Corey know that there's a problem, but I, I think everything was sounding okay when I left the, the office there a moment ago. But uh, good to have you all with us here for the first Sunday of Advent. Things have been uh, decorated. We had a number of folks here yesterday, and a big thank you to all of them. Thanks to Dave and Skip for bringing the tree, um, and for Linda and um, Kelsey for organizing a number of other people to come here and put all the decorations up. So for everybody who was able to do that, uh, Mason and Maggie and Angie and Deb Antle, thank all of you for, for being here and helping uh, to decorate. It looks beautiful. Thank you all for pictures. I'm gonna ask Corey to try to zoom in here. This might take a little bit of work. We can do it though. We're going to zoom into the, into the tree and you'll get to see some of those pictures, but we have quite a lot of pictures on there. Uh, we included the care center children, so I think there's about 120 care center children on the, on the tree. And then there's about, I think there, I received about 40 or so from folks in the church, and you can still send me your pictures or drop them off or whatever. We'll get it on the tree. Um, oh, that's zooming right in there to me. Nice. Just don't zoom into Esther and Dave's. That's a little risque, so... Anyway, but we've got, got a wonderful selection of pic pictures from all of you. The idea being we want to, although we can't all be here and we're all not choosing to be here at this time, we can be here in spirit. So just uh, thought that would be a neat way to decorate our tree uh, this year. So thank you everybody for that. Now, a couple other things. We are going to have communion in the service today. So again, to the folks on Zoom, I encourage you, if you don't already have it, have some bread and a drink prepared at the time for communion. What we will do is you will come forward. Those of you here uh, will usher you forward. Try to keep our social distance. I ask that you keep your mask on. You're going to take a cup out of the uh, out of the um, tray for the for the juice, and then step either to your right or to your left. And Matt or myself will be there to give you a piece the bread, you will go back to your, your seat and wait until we will all commune with both elements together once everyone, once everyone has them. So you only come up one time, you'll get both elements, you'll go back to your seat. So we will do that a little later in the service and look forward to that. A couple other things that are happening, I sent some emails with a reminder of the various gift opportunities for our Bethany Children's Home gift giving. Uh, I will send that email out again this week, just reminding you the options. You received the newsletter either in your uh, post office box or you received it in your email and that has also the list in there as well for things for Bethany Children's Home. Also for Effort of Manor. We usually collect items for Effort of Manor. I think this year they are asking mainly for gift cards um, just so that it, it limits the number of actual things that people are getting and touching and all that. Um, so check that list out as well. I'm also going to send out in an email, there's two other opportunities that we've been made aware of that I want to invite folks to participate in as well. One of our parents of our care center children here is a worker at the uh, Wellspan Philhaven inpatient um, facility up in Mount Gretna. She shared with us that because of COVID, it's actually changed the dynamic of their adult inpatients. People are having to stay longer. People are coming without a lot of things and cannot get a lot of things. Um, uh, just normal toiletry as well as clothing they'd like to have available for some of these folks. So there's a list of different items from t-shirt to undergarments to toothpaste and that, that they're looking to collect. And we're gonna collect those things here. I have invited the ministerium to participate and I can pass them on through this particular parent who works there. Uh, and lastly, regarding that is real life uh, services here in Denver. Uh, they're doing a first Friday gathering of food items and, and other needs that they're trying to do every first Friday to help with people in need in the community. So I'm again going to include that list in a newsletter, in, a, in an email this week for everybody. If you're not going to get emails but would like to know what items there are, just, or just call the church and we'll, we'll fill you in on those things. Um, if you do come to church at any time in the next several weeks, your offering envelopes are here in the narthex. You can pick those up. Uh, if you don't, by the end of the year here, we will send them to you, but we're hoping that as many of you as possible can pick them up. It'll just alleviate uh, 
a lot of postage costs. And then relative to our increasing list of uh, pastoral care concerns, I do want to keep you updated there. Um, so we know that Gladys Getz is currently at the Gardens of Stevens where she's rehabbing after a fall and some other issues halfway through her rehab. She also um, became positive for COVID but is kind of asymptomatic, so she's doing okay. In the meantime, husband Kenny, fell this past week, is currently at the Ephrata Hospital where they're trying to get him up and going again. So keep Kenny and Gladys in your prayers. Joanne McVeigh was in the hospital as well, is now at the rehab at Lebanon Manor Care. Um, so keep Joanne in your prayers. Our friend Ed Hanna is on Zoom with us. He continues to be in rehab up at the Lehigh Valley Hospital following a stroke. He's with us from this hospital room. Welcome, Ed. We keep him in our prayers also. Last week, I mentioned that Barry and Brenda Reed had COVID, as did Kathy Scott's son and, and daughter-in-law and grandchild. I believe all of them are now kind of out of their quarantine periods, slowly doing better. So continue to remember them. Our care center is being hit by COVID in a way that's kind of leaving us up in the air a little bit with some things. Uh, we have had at least two students who've had that. It's caused the need to quarantine about 35 students who are able to come back on Tuesday. The school, schools, are doing virtual at least for this week, which is meaning all of our school-aged children are going to be here all day versus in the morning before school and after school which is requiring our staff to be here longer. We have two staff people who currently have COVID and are not able to be here, and a third one who's waiting for their spouse's results to come back, which might leave us short on staff. So we're still working all the way through that. So keep, uh, keep our, our care center folks in your thoughts and your prayers, Charlotte and Aaron, as they're trying to navigate all this. Uh, so we appreciate that as well. Um, I think that's where I'll leave us for our pastoral care concerns at the moment. How's that sound? Lots going on, lots of things to give to God in prayer, and lots of reasons to bring ourselves before the Lord together virtually and in-house here. And we do that today knowing that this is a new season in the church. It's the new year, so to speak, for the church. It's Advent. It's our time of waiting it's our time of anticipating. It's our time of remembering the coming of Christ and the return of Christ. So I lead us this morning in the service. I'm going to read my scripture throughout the service. I'm not going to show them up on the screen. I'm just going to read them. So I want you to hear the word as I read it each time. So as we start today, hear the word of the Lord. This is from Isaiah. Chapter 40, verses 3 through 11. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with his might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is our God who comes and joins us as we call upon his name in worship and devotion. 
Let the prelude lead us into this time of worship and devotion before our Lord. Advent is the season of lights, where we bring our lights into the sanctuary, where we light our Advent wreath candles, because we know we live in a place of darkness. We are people of sin. We need a light into our world, the light of Christ. 
God brings his light as we acknowledge our darkness. Advent is a season in which we acknowledge the darkness. So let's take a moment and pause, bow our hearts, our heads, and bring the darkness of our sins in confession to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we hear the music and are reminded of the refrain, we want to rejoice. But we know that that joy and that rejoicing evolves out of the darkness. We would have no joy, and we have no joy, until we recognize the forgiveness of the sins that we have. The things that we hold on to besides you. The darkness that we wallow in instead of turning to your light. Lord, forgive us for those ways in which we have chosen, as your word says, the darkness over the light. We place ourselves before you with all of our sin, lifting it to you. May we know your love receive your forgiveness, and live in and out of your hope. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Here again, the word of the Lord from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of the Lord. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thanks be to God for his word and his grace and his peace. Let us take a moment now. We'll encourage you to unmute yourselves on Zoom and let's pass the peace of Christ to those worshiping with us today. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you. Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Christ be with all. Peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you all. Now, Hunter is with us today, and Aiden, and Aiden's kind of hanging out over there. Hunter and I had a conversation. We're not going to have a children's message today, but if Hunter, if you'd like to go with Miss Steph, would you like to go with her? You're going to? All right. And Miss Steph and you are going to talk about the hope that is our focus today as I talk to all the rest of us about that hope. So I invite us again to hear the word of God as I read it from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. 
Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts, and he ate honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God. Continue to let that word speak to your hearts as we hear Phil's special music this morning. Well, that was good timing. I got done there just in time. Thank you. The title of my sermon today is Living Between Holidays. It's what I want to talk about. But before I speak to that, we have one more passage to read today. And it also is from the Gospels. The 24th chapter of Matthew, starting with verse 1. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will this be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The word of the Lord today, may he add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of all these passages. You might have heard me, I'm sure I shared this story before, the story of the sailor who was stranded on a desert island for several years, until finally one day he saw a ship in the near distance, 
And then another ship coming from that ship, and that second little boat arrived on his island, and an officer stepped off the boat, and he came to the man, and he dropped off a stack of newspapers. And he said, these are compliments of the captain. He asks that you look at these papers and read them, and then decide if you still want us to rescue you. 2020 has felt a little bit like that, hasn't it? We're ready to get rescued from here. After reading and hearing and experiencing all the, for lack of a better word, but the word we've been using today, the darkness of 2020, we're looking forward to a little light, some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, Lest we allow ourselves to think this was an exceptional year, let me just say that kind of looking back in the archives of my sermons, I used that same stranded guy on the desert story about the headlines of the newspaper in an Advent message I gave in 2007. When the headlines of the papers for 2007 were filled with things like terrorism, not only abroad, but threats of terrorism in our country, there was, uh, there was talk at that time throughout the papers about overpopulation and a great fear had started to seize everyone that were heading in that direction. There was an arms race, or there were arms races in Pakistan, Iran, Korea, India. Suicide had become the number one cause of death for teenagers. There were all sorts of things going on in that year that prompted the use of that illustration. And I can guarantee you, I believe strongly that it doesn't really matter what year, if you took a poll at the end of the year of all the people and asked them you know, about the year, the majority of people say they're ready for a new year. We will always focus on the darkness of our days because there is a lot of darkness. Jesus told us there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and there will be earthquakes and we can imply in there there will be pandemics and there will be other problems. That's darkness. Isaiah the prophet, or God through, the, through Isaiah the prophet, spoke to us about this darkness and a lot of different metaphors in chapter 40 that I read at the beginning of the service. Isaiah talked about a confusing disorienting wilderness. Perhaps that applies to life for you at times. He spoke about the word desert, a word that meant parched, scorching, dry. Perhaps again, that's been descriptive of life for you, for me. He spoke of an empty, deep, dark valley. He spoke of insurmountable mountains. He spoke of uneven ground that causes one to stumble and trip. And he spoke of hard, impenetrable, rough places. Those are all various metaphors, descriptions of darkness, of life that we encounter, whether it's 2020 or whatever day, whatever year it might be. Isaiah further describes the darkness by talking about the human condition of all of us when he says, all people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field, the grass withers, the flower fades when the Lord breathes upon it. None of that sounds too wonderful, does it? And yet, in Isaiah, in scripture, in our faith, there is additional words. In Isaiah, the additional words come like this. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. The word of our God will stand forever. And what is that word? The word is, here is your God. Your God is here. The Lord has come. And when he comes, Isaiah says, he will feed you. When he comes, he will gather you into his arms. He will carry you in his bosom. He will gently lead you in the midst of the darkness. John the Baptist says, 
The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In other words, whether it's Isaiah, whether it's John the Baptist, or it's me, I'm, they, we are saying that there was darkness and hope. And that hope became real in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God showing us and assuring us then, now, and to come that whatever wilderness we find ourselves in, he's there with us. Whatever desert is zapping us of our strength, he is there to give us our strength back. Whatever mountain is insurmountable, he's there to help level it. Whatever valley is deeply, darkly affecting us, he is there to lift us up out of it. Whatever rough way we have or uneven ground that's going to cause us to stumble, he's there to level it off. Whatever circumstance or situation or place we find ourselves, he is there to feed, carry, hold, lead us. That's our hope. Jesus Christ is the way and the things of God become real. There has been darkness and there has been Jesus. There will be darkness and there will be Jesus. There is darkness and there is Jesus. For the non-churchy, non-Christian perhaps, Advent is just that time period between holidays. There's my sermon title living between holidays. We're now in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's even people who aren't Christian or don't go to church, but they'll still buy an advent calendar to track the days in between, probably to get the little piece of candy that's in there. But they'll still do an advent calendar. From now until Christmas morning, we're living between holidays. But that's also the case in a grander sense for us as people of, of faith. We are living between holy days. The holy days of Jesus coming and the holy days of Jesus coming again. We are living between those miracles, between those holy days, if you will. And even for us of faith, those days might seem like and certainly are experienced as times of darkness. But let me remind you of Jesus' full words when he said, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise up against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and there will be earthquakes. And then he says, all this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Now, because I am a man, I'm sure my wife and any childbearing woman will tell me I have no right to ever talk about birth pangs, because I have no idea what that's like. But from watching and hearing it told, birth pangs are painful, excruciatingly painful. Am I getting anywhere close, ladies? And frightening. But birth pangs are also an indication that a great, wonderful joy is about to come. They are an indication that a new life is about to be bestowed upon this mother, these parents. Birth pangs tell us a new life is about to be bestowed upon the world. Birth pangs tell us that God is still doing something even in the midst of the darkness. There will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will fight nations. Kingdoms will fight kingdoms. There will be 
famines and earthquakes and pandemics. And they are but birth pangs because something is still happening. God is still making something happen. And we know what the something is. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Our hope. Now that Jesus has been here, we know what we're hoping for. Jesus is God's future. As Jesus has been God's past, and God's presence. We've tasted it, we've experienced it, and we've had the light shine in our darkness, and we now live the hope of Jesus Christ. We live the hope of the light fully engulfing everything again. We live presently knowing Jesus is God's future. That's what we do as people of faith. We live knowing what's coming because we know what has been, Jesus Christ. We're like the little boy who in the department store who's found standing next to the escalator and he's just watching the handrail go. He's just standing there watching. A clerk notices this and after a while the clerk goes up to the little boy concerned. He says, little boy, are you lost? And the boy says, no, nah, I'm just waiting for my chewing gum to come back. We're not lost. We're the people who know Christ is coming back. We know and we live that hope every day because we know it's happening already. When the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, when they said to him, tell us, when will this happen? When will you come back? When will the ages end? Jesus didn't tell them a when. Turn in your Bible sometime to Matthew chapter 25. Jesus' answer is a bunch of stories that we're somewhat familiar with. Jesus answered to them when they say, when are you returning? When is this going to happen? Jesus says, I don't, basically he says, I don't want you to think about the when. I want you to just know that you are like the servants of a master who left and left you in charge of the household. And I want you to be the faithful servant who takes care of the household of servants until the master comes back. I don't want you to be concerned about when I'm coming back or when this age ends. I want you to be like those bridesmaids who were the smart bridesmaids who had the light and they made sure they kept the light going while they waited for the bridegroom. They tended to the light. I don't want you to be concerned about when I'm returning or when the age is going to end. I want you to think about being the slaves of the master who left them and left them in, in, with some property to tend to. I want you to be like the two who took that property and went out and used it, did something with it, in fact, increased it. I don't want you to be like the one who received the property and buried it and did nothing with it. Because when I come back, I'm going to be like a king who separates you out like sheep and goats. And what I'm looking for are those of you who, like the servants, like the bridesmaids, like the slaves, have been tending to the hope. You've been living the hope. You've been feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting the prisoners, caring for the sick. Because when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. You are to live the hope. You know what is to come. It's Jesus. Live Jesus. In other words, be waiting, be ready, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Not worried about whens, not worried about predictions. Just do it. Because we have the hope already, and that hope is Jesus. It doesn't matter when. It has already happened. It will happen. You just make sure it's happening now. We're living in between the miracles. We're living in between the holy days. So like Motel 8, we're going to keep the light on. While you're traveling out there in the world, we're the people who are going to keep that light of hope on. Because we know the light was lit a long time ago, and we know the light's still going to be lit later, so we're going to keep it lit by being faithful. And that's why we light the Advent candle. I've got to get a little loud here because I'm going away from the microphones. Hopefully you can hear me. 
Today we light the candle of hope. Because we are called to be that hope. We are living out the hope that is already known to us. Jesus Christ. We're living that hope so that the world might know that hope. Christ has already been, Christ will be. So we make sure Christ is happening now. We are keeping the light on inside of ourselves and together as God's people, reminding each other of our hope in Jesus Christ. And that's what we do with communion as well. Communion reminds us of the light that we have, that we will have, and that we are to continue to be. Like the birth pangs that Jesus spoke of, the crucified Christ reminds us that despair and disillusionment are not terminal, but they are signs of impending resurrection and life. As Paul said, we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So we let the light of hope shine. And we come together before the table of hope called communion, the meal that is ours. So I invite you to be prepared to commune. Corey, are you able to get that uh, response up on the screen there? And we'll use this as our entrance into our time together of communing. And if not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I will say it all for us. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are aware of your hope because we are here. We would not be here without having known that that hope of Jesus Christ, that that hope touched our lives, has fed our lives, has moved our lives, has sustained our lives through thick and thin, through darkness and sunshine. So we have come today to remind not only ourselves, but to make the world aware that no matter what this year or this day has looked like, there is light. And that light has a name, has a form, Jesus Christ. And we are to show that between these holy days, between these miracles. So Lord, feed us Sustain us by this communion, by this time, this sacrament together. As we partake, may we indeed meet you and be your people as you need us to be. So come to us, Lord, and share with us yourself in this meal. We pray for each other. We pray for the darkness that each of us has, that it might, in fact, be dispensed by light spoken of today, experienced in some way by a brother or sister in Christ. As we come alongside each other, as we remind each other of your word, as we lift each other up by the good news that at times comes out of birth pangs, out of crucifixions, 
out of darkness. Be our hope this day. We come in the name of Jesus. And as we come, we pray his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples and had a meal with them. He had been their hope. He let them know that he will continue to be their hope. As he lifted up the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying to them, this is my body broken for you. Remember me. In that meal also, he took the cup. After drinking from it, he lifted it up and he said, in this cup is the new covenant of love that flows through my blood. As often as you drink it, remember me. And now, O oh Lord, we remember you. More than remember you. May we take you in in your fullness as shown to us in Jesus Christ. May we be filled with his word, his ways, his acts. May we be filled with his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness. May we be reminded again of the covenant that we have with you through Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our hope, as we come now before you in this meal. Amen. This is a meal we invite all those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to come to. Those of you at home, get your bread, your drink. Those of you here, Bob will usher you in a moment to come forward and again, just come to the center and take your cup and either to the right or left and receive your bread. The meal is ready, come.
the bread of life, who came to give us life, our hope. Take and eat. The drink given that we may never thirst again. The drink of a covenant, a forgiveness, a love, our hope in Jesus Christ. Take and drink. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep and preserve you body, soul, and spirit unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks this day that we might find hope and find it abundantly in Jesus Christ. That through all that we do here in this service, from prayer to hearing your word to lighting our wreath to our decorations and trees and to this time, this different time, but still powerful time at your table. We find in it all your very presence and your assurance of life to us, no matter what. We thank you and we praise you and we knew our, we are now filled by you to go forth in the blessed name of Christ. Amen. Our hope is real. Our hope is Jesus Christ. Christ has come. Christ will come. You, I, we live making sure Christ is here for all to see and know. Go alive in the hope of Christ. Amen. Let the postlude take you into the world. Have a good Sunday, everybody. Yep. Yeah, we came here. God bless you all. I'll talk to you later, Ed. All right. Take care. Yep. Wonderful Sunday. Bye. 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 Good morning, Jenny. I must have missed the. Yeah, I don't know.
Morning, Doug, Jeannie. No, they're probably on the computer. Use the phone with the one with the phone. I'll come in to get the picture. Because they didn't they don't have it on, they didn't last week till they went to go home. You should be able to unmute, I think. Up oh, there we go. There you go. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Good. Wow, you stayed on. What do you have? Some kind of exciting news or something? Oh yeah. You got a little bit of blue on your plexiglass. That's I know. I was seeing that. I we had to figure out what that is. I probably had to lower it or something, <laughs> but I made it higher because it didn't seem high enough. So we we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. No. It yes, we noticed good. that. It was good. Good. Very good. Did We're your daughter tell you off. she ran into my son? Yeah, she did. He told me as well. He texted me one night. He's like, what is, what is uh, Doug's daughter's name? He probably yeah. said Rectal, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, right. Rectal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him to get it right. And so um, I told him, he said, well, I think she's here with a friend of his girlfriend's. Oh, so. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to tell you guys that, but then I wasn't, I, I kind of forgot about it. We got the same text that night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Asking <coughs> about, telling us about Josiah. And we're like, oh, well, how are you with Josiah? And he, she said, well, that's Seth's girlfriend, or Seth, one of Seth's friends that's a girl that's Josiah's girlfriend. Yeah. I, like, I guess they went to Messiah what? together. So yeah. it's right. a small world. Kind of. So, yeah. Kind of. I'm not sure I'm uh, comfortable with your daughter in my son's world, though. So we have to watch Hey, that. hey, hey. Let's go. <laughs> I, know. I, said, I said, did he run and hide? <laughs> who else is behind you there? Kyle's, by, but who's the other guy? That's Connor. Diane's, Diane's boy. boy. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so they're here. Diane. And there's Diane. Hi, Diane. <laughs> well, you're over there. Good to see you. You're right here. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Hello. Hello. All right. Well, so, good yeah, to so see you guys. Looks like my parents are you still over the gone. Yeah, the dogs had oh, God. Yeah, the dogs had to walk. He moved out of frame. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Ah. Nice All right. There he is. Okay. Yeah, there he is. Oh. Nice to see How are you? Good. Good. We were talking about the fight last night, Brad, because I think uh, who was fighting? Tyson. 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 Somebody else. I said I think the last time I saw him fight was at your mom and dad's house when Holyfield and him went at it or something. Yeah, we might have had that. We we used to get those fights and watch them. Yeah. You remember that? So. <laughs> yeah, I saw he yeah. fought last night. Supposedly he did pretty well for a 54 year old guy. It, it, it actually well, looked pretty heard, good. Yeah. He said. But it's some kind of exhibition. They don't really have judges or anything. The one's a different. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? He did right. good thing. Well, I'm going to shut you down so I can go you. home. Good. All okay. right. Brad's hey. shutting us down. Well, have a good day. All right. Day. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, All right. Bye. Good to see you all. Bye-bye. All right.